Judiciary Committee. There we go. There's Mike. Hey, guys. Oh, you know what? My TV's on. Oh, my gosh. I thought the debate was over at 7. It's not over. We were we were in the thick of it. But anyway, hey, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's your first time here ever. Welcome for the first time. Um, Let me make sure everything is up because, you know, I just don't trust myself when I start these out. Anyway, I am winded because... I'm just sitting here watching the debate. Forgot we had a live. Forgot I had you guys waiting. But tonight, I'm super excited. So welcome back to Second Life 101. Usually, these are catered toward people that are kind of new to Second Life or whatever. Um, does the camera look good? But anyway, they're dedicated to new residents of Second Life. But a lot of you have asked me a bunch about starting a YouTube channel, how to grow on YouTube, how to find your audience, how to make money, like all of the things. Um... I didn't really prepare because I've been watching this for the last hour, but I have a lot to share with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log Mila in, although like technically, do I need her? I don't know. I'm going to log her in just so we can have her. I had a little hiccup with Second Life today, so I tried to log in earlier and found out that my account had been terminated, my Second Life account. <laughs> So, you know, I caused the fit, honey. I got real buck real for a solid 20 minutes before I came back. Um, but yeah, that's that's a story time for another day. <laughs> Let me get her. Let me pop my chat out so I can, like, organize my screen a little bit. Was I late? I'm sorry if I was late. I can't even tell. Let me see. Let me pop you out. So we're going to talk about all this. We're going to talk about like my full setup. Um, and I do want to talk a little about my experience. So I've done a video on YouTube before about like how to start your channel and all of that good stuff. But, you know, a lot has happened since then. I've started going on camera. There's so much I'm still learning. But in terms of logistics, I want to break all that down too. I just shoved this wig on. All right. Let me see. Do I play I'm viewed? No. If you are here, say hi in chat. I'm so sorry I missed the hellos. I know. If you do have a channel here, totally let me know. Or um, drop it in the Discord. So we have a channel for YouTube channels. I, I try to catch up on that every week and check out your videos and subscribe and when applicable. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm speechless today. This debate has me feeling some type of way, honey. We got to put music on. Whew. It was getting a little heated. And we, we have a server in, or a channel in the Discord server about politics just so we can take it out of the rest of the server. But I do think people are multifaceted. And just because you like Second Life, like, doesn't mean you don't like politics. But I think, you know, as long as we remain respectful, I know there's a lot of us with different views. So I appreciate you guys. Ooh, Zephyr, you have a channel. All right, hey guys. I know a few of you do. I know a few of you live stream. Um, oh wait, my head is it's still a whole lot of me. I'm gonna crop this a little bit. I'll tell you guys all about that too. Cause I gotta tell you all about OBS and all the fun stuff. But um, again, I do have a video on like the logistical things. I do think we're still gonna have to dive into that portion because when I first started, you know, I wasn't a huge, well, I'm still not like a huge gaming person. I had no idea what people use for gaming. I didn't know what it looked like. Like only recently when I turned on the camera, did I start looking at other gaming channels? I'm like, what do they do on camera? Like, what's weird? What's not? Where should my little box go? Like, there's just so much I have no idea about still, but at least we can talk. Um, when I first went to go name this video, I, I said my journey from zero to 5,000. And then I, I didn't realize my subscriber count was closer to 7,000. <laughs> so I think there's a lot to be done. I am, a, I'm just a strategic person. I'm a numbers person and I like those kind of things. So, you know, I've been on YouTube for almost a year now. So it'll be a year around like November. I think my first stream ever was in December of last year. So, you know, I've learned a lot. Oh, Neil, I saw that you have a Second Life channel now. I saw that, like, right before I came on. I was going through Discord. See, Aisha? It's, it's like that. I had no idea what I was doing the first time, but I'm not one to, like, test things out. I was just like, well, there we go. <laughs> I'm live. Let's see what happens. And I'm really trying to, like, remember back to my first day's live. I don't remember. All right. I'm just going to do this from up here because it's 
so lag free. <laughs> Reyna is up here setting up for a Halloween party that's coming up. So, you know, keep your ears out or ears peeled. <laughs> All right. So let's think about structure. How do I want to structure this? I think I'll start off by talking about general tips or things that I would recommend when either creating your channel or building your audience. Um, I'll then go into like tech stuff, the tools that you need in terms of like software, editing, all that fun stuff. I will spend some time talking about the things that I've learned about the camera, because literally from week to week, if you haven't noticed, I've learned so much more about camera. I'm still struggling with audio, but we'll get there. It's okay. <laughs> Girl, is that debate still on? I'm mad I'm missing it. I really thought it was over a seven. Why is theirs longer than the presidential one? Yeah, I always keep my lives up. <laughs> that's that's a personal decision. So let's talk about that. So I think the first thing that you really kind of have to decide on when you're deciding to start a channel, um, especially a Second Life channel. So I think maybe let's start there. Why did I choose to start a Second Life channel versus just a gaming channel? Because I do play a couple of other games. There are things I, I really enjoy. Um, but everything that I came across when I was thinking of starting a channel was talking about like niche down. You have to niche down in the beginning. Um, so not only did I niche down to one specific game, I niche down within that niche. And I think the easiest way or what's made it really easy for me to grow or really to connect with my audience is I have very specific um, types of videos for SL. So that's the first thing you have to do. Like, what type of SL YouTuber do you want to be? And I think that can relate to <laughs> what even is First Life? But I think that can relate to any type of game. Like, what kind of content do you want to deliver? You know, when I even look at Sims content, I see people who do Let's Plays. I see people who do um, like scripted series or cast stuff or worlds like they have figured it out and you know there it's rare that you see one channel do it all i mean i guess they can but same same method with second life although you're already like niche down cuz you're playing one specific game um you need to niche down further within second life i'm trying to keep up with chat too i'm sorry if i sound winded i feel like i'm still winded what's happening thank you i didn't like get it on all the way i'm telling you i was rushing <laughs> cuz i was trying to watch the debate and cook brownies how to network. Yeah, we could do a video on that. Um, remind me though, drop it on Discord in the video request. If y'all don't notice, a lot of these videos are your request. So I totally listen. Um, so yeah, so when I decided to make a Second Life channel, I was like, okay, what kind of Second Life content do I want? And I, I recommend just diving into it. Like don't put too much thought into. So my first several weeks like if you scroll go I, I i recommend that you go back to the beginning of my channel um when i first created it i was just throwing up monarchy videos that i had saved i've honestly deleted a lot or yeah i deleted a lot of those the monarchy has its own channel now that i haven't even like worked on but those were just like promo things for the club and i needed somewhere to store them so i don't consider those part of like my youtube experience they were just literally a storage i don't even think they were listed they were unlisted and they were adult <laughs> but if you go back to last, like the end of November is when I created my first video. And that one was, it was like a gameplay video, but it was almost like, um, like a comic. Like I was developing a story. I found out that wasn't for me. It took a lot of editing for me to produce a five minute video. And I was like, that's not worth it for me. And then I was doing BU. So I made all these like cooking videos, but then I very quickly got, you know, tired of BU in second life. And then that's when I decided to start live streaming. So you really kind of have to experiment in the beginning. And I, I strongly recommend, so I always see, I don't know, I'm not going to say it's a mistake, but <laughs> I think it's just something that SL YouTubers do is they look at other channels and just try to copy what that content is. I think you really just have to like give yourself the credit of, like playing in your creativity and letting it all fly. You know, when I, when I first came to YouTube, there were very few second life YouTubers. There were like four. And I think y'all know who the four were. And the majority of their content was blogging. They, they were clearly vloggers. They worked with brands, they share sales, they talk about fashion trends, what's new in SL. And I think that's super important. That wasn't me. I don't, even follow trends in SL. I don't keep up with things going on. Half the time I'm finding out about an event to shop is because you guys told me. <laughs> um, so really like have a very specific idea. Um, Aisha, nope, I don't even think so. So I, that's, you, that's, that's what caught me up, right? Because I remember before, so what was I doing? So Second Life 101 started at some point. I was like, I want to teach people how to use the platform. Meanwhile, at the time, 
I don't even know all that much about Second Life. Like, I, I, I've been here playing, but I didn't know, like, logistically, I didn't know what the new user experience was. So I think, you, you know, allow yourself to take your viewers on a ride with you. And I think that's what has helped me really connect with a lot of you guys. And honestly, first of all, pause, because I, I mentioned I have 7,000 subscribers now, a little close to it. We, like... 50 away so thank you guys i really appreciate it i really feel like i've grown with you guys and you know we're learning together and i think you have to give that experience to your viewers i think it creates a stronger bond especially your first 5,000. like that is that is your crew that is your team i still remember my first hundred subscribers like i i've had conversations with them i have most of them on my list in the world like you kind of want to I don't know, give, just give your viewers the opportunity to follow you. And I remember I was having this conversation, I think with B the other day, because um, I was following a Second Life YouTuber who had their the number of subscribes hidden. And I remember thinking that when I first started, I was like, oh, let me hide these, because it's like, kind of embarrassing. But I think it's it's good to bring people along the ride with you. And I think, you know, allow them to celebrate your successes and your wins. So I don't know. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't hold yourself back because you haven't gotten to a certain point. Like if this is what you want to do, do it. A lot of the channels that I follow, so I follow a lot of channels that talk about YouTube, that teach about like the YouTube algorithm. And a lot of these people are giving YouTube advice and they've been giving YouTube advice at a point where they only had, you know, I think there's one that I followed for a while. I had way more subscribers than he did, but you know, I believed what he was teaching <laughs> and you know, we're growing together. Like, I think we have the same amount of subscribers at this point. Um, because you're just with them. You see them grow. You're bound to grow. Honestly, obviously, you have some sort of expertise in that field that you can share just because you haven't applied it all to yourself. And, you know, think about that for a second, because that's a little challenging to do sometimes. Um, just because you know something, you're great at it doesn't mean like it's it's you're putting it into fruition for yourself. I remember when I used to work um, for a consulting firm and I was very good at curating people and bringing out people's talents and connecting them with our clients. You know, I would call myself a web developer at that time, but no, I was getting other web developers connecting them with clients versus like doing it myself. So sometimes you just don't put the same amount of energy into yourself, although you have the expertise. So, um, Lisa, bring that up for me in 10 minutes, because honestly, if you want to be a good a second life vlogger or whatever you want to call this and you want to grow, you can't stick to how people in SL think. And that has been, I think, one of the most successful things for me because when I decided to start in SL, you know, obviously Second Life has a very specific community around bloggers and how bloggers and creators have a relationship together. And I just don't, I'm not subscribed to it. I don't like how it works. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like, I don't like the relationship at all. It's, it's nothing like real life. Cause you know, I used to, that same consulting firm I used to work for, you know, we, we were big into, you know, digital marketing and we had brands and bloggers together all the time. And the relationship that SL has with, Bloggers is just so, so ass backwards. Um, I don't subscribe to it. Granted, I don't think, I'm not trying to say you shouldn't because that relationship works great for a lot of people and a lot of content. But I think when you're thinking about growing on YouTube, don't let kind of that influence your expertise with YouTube and what you're learning. And what, what I was learning, I found the way the Second Life operates isn't the way that I can operate and expect to grow on my channel. Um... <laughs> I try, Loana. <laughs> I mean, I don't try. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Y'all, y'all make me comfortable. But um, what were we talking about? We were talking about like finding your niche, I guess. So when I first came, there were all bloggers talking about sales and all that stuff. And I think that's important to sell. And I think there's always going to be bloggers that do that. And I think it's awesome to see that kind of content in Second Life. That's the kind of content that I do watch. There are some channels. I think Nevada. Um, there are just some channels that I watch to kind of see what's going on. What's her name on Facebook? Ollie. I watch her all the time because she does all the events. So that just wasn't me. So you got to make sure it's you because you can't just copy what someone else is doing. I know in the beginning, um, I, I noticed <laughs> like a lot of people would do like, like literally take my title and concept for a video and throw it on their channel. And I'm like, it just doesn't make sense. We're not the same. We don't have the same interest and their content would be like all over the place. So in the beginning, let's say like first zero to a hundred, no, zero to hundred is where you play. If we, we have zero to hundred is like where you're playing around, just messing around with a bunch of different content. I think zero to 500 is where you start to decide on what you want to YouTube about. And that's where you, um, that's where you decide. 
I'm blacking out. I keep, I can't like read and talk today for some reason. But zero to 500 is where you want to find like what your your specialty is, like what your magic power is. It is, is it shopping events? Is it tutorials? Are there challenges? Are you doing prank videos? Are you trolling? Like not to say you should go out and troll, but sometimes it'd be funny. Um, just figure out like what you enjoy doing in Second Life and bring that to your channel and really niche down. So when I noticed, because I did it first, when my content was everything, when my content was fashion, beauty, makeup, hauls, shopping, tutorials, gameplay, nobody was watching it. My view, my, I think my videos were getting like 100 to 200 views for all of those. When I was like, okay, I'm not doing all of that. I'm not posting every single day because they don't know me yet. They're, no one wants to binge content from someone they don't know and trust yet. <laughs> so I scaled back. I only started doing, I think I went down to like three days a week. And I picked a few different types of videos that I really like. So although Second Life is a very much like a strong niche, it's a small community, it's getting bigger. And I think the more we create YouTube channels, the bigger our audience is gonna get. So that's why I'm always encouraging people to start. But um, just niche down, super, super specific. Oh yeah, girl, see, I don't even know that many. I know like 10. <laughs> And that's another thing a lot of people um, really encourage like networking and doing that with other YouTubers. That's personally something that I'm only just getting into now. Uh, for me, it really was about finding what my interest was. Even today, um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I like. I found a new thing that I do like that I'm bringing to this channel tomorrow actually because it was very easy to edit. And I was like, I could do this. <laughs> um, yeah, I like the video. Thank you, girl. I always forget to do things or say things like that. But yeah, so zero to five, zero to 100, play around, figure out what you like to do. Maybe watch some other videos. Um, maybe start commenting and connecting with other YouTubers. So, you know, if you in the future want to collab with them, you have an opportunity. Zero to 500, I would say that's when you start to really niche down and decide on exactly what the content is. And now zero to 1,000. So once you get to 1,000, that's when you can become a YouTube partner. So that means you can start making ad revenue. However, big recommendation. I started using affiliate links when I was only at like 100 to 200 subscribers. Now, a lot of them you don't get accepted into because you you don't have huge numbers, but... I um, started doing affiliate things early on and you guys were actually clicking and buying on things. So it's not impossible to make money from YouTube when you don't have very many subscribers. So I think, you know, one of my biggest affiliate relationships is with Filmora and the other ones with Epidemic. And I know you guys hear me talk about this all the time, you know, use Filmora and Epidemic <laughs> um, because I love them. So that's the first thing I wanted to do. I wanted to find actual companies that I like. Also, I affiliate for Second Life. So I earn when a lot of you guys sign up for Second Life. So there's ways to make money before you even get to a thousand. But when you get to a thousand, that's where you're starting to make like your money moves. And that's where you have to become a little strategic, especially when it comes to growing. So when, you, when you're up there, when you like finally get to a thousand, <laughs> you, your, your relationship with the YouTube algorithm is a little different. Um, hey Chanel, hey Lele, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't say hi to anyone else. This is what I always try to avoid when I start saying hi too late in the game. <laughs> um, but yeah, so get really strategic. And when I talk about strategy, oh yeah, I'll talk about subathons. Um, we'll talk about that as strategy too. So strategy, when I talk about that is you have to start getting very strategic about how you post, um, how often. Ooh, I don't even know why I have these in. I don't have any music on. But how you post, how often you, I'm just gonna leave it up. How often you post, what days you post, what times a day you post, all of those things start to really matter because once you start to kind of get into a rhythm, YouTube really does start pushing your content forward. So, you know, I think there was a while where I would go search Second Life like on an incognito browser and all of like the recommended videos at the top were like me and a couple other people. But what I noticed about all of us, we were all, posting specific times on specific days and we weren't being late to it. So I know sometimes I say I'm late because I was starting soon, soon, ugh, starting soon screen going forever, but you buy your damn dollar, like at 7 p.m. If I say it's 7 p.m., I'm there and I do that consistently. So literally after a few weeks of being consistent, YouTube really does start recommending you to people that they think are going to be interested in your content. Whew. Now, subathons, that's another strategy, right? So um, 
I hadn't seen it in Second Life very often, but the cool thing about Second Life is you have an opportunity to connect and meet with subscribers in world, like live, and you can do something in a way that also builds your numbers. So basic level, a subathon is meant to get more subscribers. Um, you set a goal for the day, you give prizes, you reward people for subscribing. Um, giveaways are involved usually so you can really just encourage people to subscribe and honestly the first one i did was smart because i i did all the subathon mechanics the second one i forgot to do all of that i was just partying and streaming and didn't think about it but usually what i do is um we would celebrate so the first one was like a money giveaway i think i was i started the pot at like 10,000 linden and i was like for every 10 subscribers i'll put in another thousand so at the end of the day someone's gonna win this huge pot meanwhile everyone in world of the party could also pay into it i don't remember how much money <laughs> we ended up getting up to but whoever won won a ton of money and people want to win the money and like the basic requirement for entering the giveaway was to subscribe to my channel so my first one i ever did was in like march or not march may when was that may and I, I wasn't even at a thousand subscribers yet i think i was at like i don't know 800 so you know after that specific day i remember because i i saved all my analytics that day i got 60 subscribers which when you're not at a thousand seems like a lot um but then after that you know it just like slowly kept growing was it 15k i don't know i don't remember um my second subathon, I actually introduced more like general gift cards because I don't know if you've noticed, my channel is like slowly progressing into more real life content, not getting rid of second life content. It's just like, I get to bring in a lot more of my interest now. Um, but yeah, subathons are great. Thank you, Thomas, for the sub. Why can't I hear? Oh, cause I took my damn headphones out. Um, also speaking of other strategies, a lot of people do giveaways. I do some giveaways, I think, I'd also recommend against like oversaturating your channel with giveaways because honestly your your subscribers are going to come to expect that of you and while you want to reward them you want the rewards to be meaningful so i really i do usually stick to subathons for giveaways i mean i know i started at the the like shop with me giveaways um but that was really i don't know i don't do them all the time but i think if you consistently do giveaways when you're not doing when you do something you're not doing a giveaway people are going to feel some type of way so I mean, giveaways are a good strategy, but again, be strategic with them. Don't just do them thinking you're gonna constantly grow because you're giving stuff away. Um, I've never relied on that. I honestly, the biggest thing you could take away from this <laughs> is to get very like methodical about your um, posting schedule. And also one thing that I don't think the Second Life blogger creator relationship supports is this concept of an editorial calendar. So basically, in all of media, all of journalism, all of blogging in the world, you have an editorial calendar. Usually editorial and retail calendars are very similar because in real life, you have a retail calendar as well. You know, you have back to school, you have autumn collections, you know, winter fashion week, Black Friday, like these are these are big events that retail brands focus around, but also because of that, editorial calendars usually focus around them. Um, sorry, I'm so I lost my page. But the one thing that makes it tricky about Second Life, I think, is um, there's no there's no schedule when it comes to releases, right? There there are just a bunch of events that pop out or a bunch of releases, so. That's why I think it's a little harder on the people that vlog. Look at Mila doing the most. But it's harder on the people that vlog for creators because you have to stick to their schedule. And sometimes a retail schedule is not the most strategic thing for you as a content creator. Um, so I have an editorial calendar. I've always worked with one. So, you know, what we talk about today was planned out several weeks ago. So, you know, when people are like tossing in an idea and they're like, oh, can you do this next week? Like, no, not next week, because next week is planned. And the way that I come up with like topics and stuff or schedule topics really is based on one holidays, sometimes a retail calendar because I work with real life brands and just sometimes tying into my other content. So, you know, if I were to do 
I don't know, this video is on YouTube now, my Saturday video kind of relates to it. So, you know, when as many opportunities for you to link to other content on your channel just increases your views. <laughs> Girl, didn't I teach y'all physics last week? Yes, nay, go watch that video. Um, okay, ask me more advice things because I'm blanking. Because I'm blanking, I'm gonna move on and talk about just some of the things that you need. I mean, true, Lisa, I mean, I think there's there's a lot of things that they could do from a marketing standpoint that would be a lot more engaging. <laughs> We're gonna go there. Um, and Pixel, so same, right? I never know what to post. So that's a good thing. It's like great to ask the people who already watch you and who are already engaged with you what they wanna see. Um, and then write down ideas. So what I do, I have some creative weeks and other weeks that are just dry, but I have this whole like notebook full of ideas that I want that I can actually just pull from when, you know, I'm just blanking on stuff. So there are so many days where I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do next week. I don't know what to do right now, honestly, cause you know, my Saturday videos or my Friday videos are kind of a new concept. So I don't know what I'm recording this Saturday, but we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, just write down a notebook as you come up with ideas, just jot them down. You'll get to them eventually. I think the benefit once you like really start connecting with viewers is you have this relationship with them where they're telling you kind of what their interests are. Other thing, um, I'm going to show you this. Sorry, bangs. How do I open an incognito? Wait, I need an incognito <laughs> window real quick. So this is what you also can do for ideas that I have found really useful. Open an incognito browser. Hopefully this opens it. Yes. So open an incognito browser, go to YouTube, figure out whatever your niche is. For us, we're talking about Second Life. If it's like The Sims, you know, do The Sims, whatever it is. Child, I don't know why they be showing me these ads for him. But, um, the other thing you do is go to Second Life, and these are all the things that are currently trending for Second Life. So this is what people are coming to YouTube and searching for. One thing I got really excited about when I noticed is a lot of the content that I was producing was turning into search results. So that means, like, that, that's another reason why a lot of people, that's why I encourage just Second Life content. Because when I first came on YouTube, all you would see was Second Life trolling, Second Life something else. But, like, the more we create content, it makes people curious about other channels. I know a lot of people that watch my channel that'll, you know, you know, one, my video might just be too long. Or two, they finish watching it and they just want more. So they're going to go search for exactly what my content's about. So this is why just knowing what people are searching for is super useful. Um, so yeah, do this. <laughs> so this is what I do a lot of the times. Um, these are the things that are kind of trending right now. Avatar customization is just a big one that I've always done from the beginning. Of course, pregnancy and series are huge. So this is what people are searching for. So if you're trying to figure out what to post about or what to create a video about and you just can't figure it out or can't think of anything, do this. Just incognito browser because if you go on your own browser, it's just gonna feed you what it thinks you want. Go incognito so it doesn't have all your like cash or cookies or whatever stored and search this. This is what is um, trending and popular. Now, another really interesting thing that you can check out. Do I have... Let me close this browser and open another one really quick. Oh, it's just open. Um, I'll talk about what these two things are. But where's my Tube Buddy? If you don't have Tube Buddy, get Tube Buddy. Let me see if I can get it working on a video really quick. Yeah, there really is. There's so much. Um, let me just look at this one really quick. Okay. Is this, is this it? I wanna show you guys some of the tools that I use. So I literally, I'm a tools person. I, I am committed to these things. And it's not to compare myself to others. So I think a lot of people use things like Social Blade and stuff to like check out what other channels are looking like. Biggest word of advice I can give you, because I went through this phase, I think around like June, July, where my my numbers started going backwards so you know you go in your analytics when you're a year in your analytics go up like crazy because they're comparing you to last year and especially if there's month like subathon so 
keep in mind, if you do a subathon, you're gonna get a bunch of viewers in a short period of time, and then things are gonna go back and balance out. So for that one weekend, you may have gained way more subscribers than normal, but then it's gonna balance back out and your analytics are gonna show a decline in views, a decline in subscriptions, and that can honestly shift the algorithm in a really weird way on YouTube. So what'll happen is because all of those things are going down, your actual traction on YouTube will slow down. So, you know, people are always like, do more subathons, do more subathons. No, honey, <laughs> because you're going to slow down. Um, so while it's like a nice big boom for me, I wanted to get to a thousand because I thought that I could post stories on my community tab at a thousand, but apparently that's 10,000. So I guess that's what I'm pushing for now. Um, so I did that. I wanted a big boom. I just wanted to get to a thousand and it was great. But again, I got like several, I got, I think 60 views that one day. And then that week I got like two to 3000 or two to 300 subscribers. But in comparison, the next week I wasn't, I wasn't doing that number. So it just went down. Um, so everything on my analytics was in the red. It was going down. If you would have pulled up my social blade, it would, all these like green numbers would have showed that it was going down. And also YouTube recognizes that and they don't push your content and then in front of as many people as possible. That's also, sorry, whew, I'm getting like congested. I'm talking so much, but that's also a reason why I don't recommend too many giveaways because a giveaway encourages people to follow at one specific time. You get this big boom and then, you know, for, it levels out, but then next week it's going to look like you're in a deficit in terms of views and subscribers. So it's just going to confuse things. That's why I recommend don't do them too often. Like don't make them an everyday thing, make them something special and just know that you're going to level back out. Um, so that's what, when, when it comes to these tools, don't compare yourself to other YouTubers. Cause I used to get really curious about what other YouTubers, not necessarily second life YouTubers, but just other YouTubers in general that were kind of in the same like subscriber count as me were looking like. Um, and I got into a real weird place cause you know, I'm in, I chase numbers all the time. I'm obsessed with them. So for me to like see my numbers in the red and then also see other people with the same subscriber count as me getting way more views and way more anything. Um, it was weird. So don't compare yourself to other people. Just like, don't do it. And if there are people that you find yourself just naturally comparing yourself to, like give them a break for a little bit. <laughs> All right, so this is TubeBuddy. Um, what I love about this is, yeah, it shows all of this, but it also gives you this best practice like checklist. So I do this on every single one of my videos. Chapters are a new thing that I'm doing, especially if your videos are long like mine. All my videos are at least over an hour long, which is not, it's not, it's rare on YouTube. Like most videos are like four to five minutes. Most like gameplay videos are 15 minutes. And then I'm a streamer. So I have streams and I don't edit them because I don't particularly enjoy editing, except for this new series I'm gonna tell you all about soon. But, um, use the best practices. I do this on all of my videos, be consistent with it. So the more consistency you develop, the easier things get for you. I'm very surprised that I didn't add any tags on this video. <laughs> oh, whoops. I also use tags. You get 500 tags on YouTube. Um, use all of them. Yeah. Button love. I'm telling you, some of us just like the numbers. I'm a person that likes numbers. Um, so I'm always gonna look at the numbers. I'm always going to enjoy seeing them go up. If they go down, I'm gonna to wanna to see how I can remedy that. Remedy, remedy that. I was an economics major in undergrad. Like I, I love numbers and that's one part of YouTube that I enjoy. So I'm always gonna worry about them. Um, but if you, you're not a numbers person, don't worry about it. Just do what you like. This one's a bad example because I didn't put any tags, but let me show you what it looks like on the inside. So TubeBuddy has a lot of tools. Beyond just showing you statistics, they also have this, um, they can help you with tags. So you can decide you know, what's popular right now and what tags you should use to trend. So for me, this pops up because these are my most, like the ones I use the most. Um, they also show you like, scores like you the score that your video will show up if you use that tag so sometimes i don't use tags because i know my video is not going to show up like i'm not going to just type in gaming because gaming is huge and millions of videos are going to show up before mine so i'm not even going to waste the tag on something i'm not going to show up for but you know when we say gaming pc 2020 gameplay like a very specific tag then it'll show like my ranking number comes up super high um so you can look at your keywords by score you can also look at 
um, just different tra or traffic for that specific keyword. So this is another good idea. If you just can't figure out what to post about, you can always bring up TubeBuddy and see kind of where you are. I don't even know what this is. The Sims Plus? I don't know how I'm showing up for that. <laughs> um, wait, where's the other? There's something they call tag tool. I don't know how to find it. Um, maybe explore. Oh yeah, I mean, mental health, there's always balance. You gotta have balance with everything. All right, so Second Life, again, if you have TubeBuddy, it's gonna show you, so you don't necessarily have to open like an incognito window. You could just come, I need to bring this over here. I can't see. There's a very bright light in my face. But you can, um, you come here, you enter Second Life, it's showing the same search, you know, what things are ranking. I'm gonna say Second Life Gameplay. All right, girl. Maybe I'm not, I'm gonna type it then. And then I'm gonna hit explore. Yeah, it's perfect. So this right now, it shows overall score. Um, so that's the overall score for that tag. And it'll tell you all this information. So the search volume is excellent. A lot of people are searching for Second Life gameplay. So this it should tell you, like a lot of people want Second Life gameplay. Um, just Google YouTube or TubeBuddy and it should pop up. It's a Chrome add-on. Um, but also more importantly, it shows you competition. So it'll show you how you rank in comparison to other channels. Again, gameplay isn't something I do often on my channel, so I'm in the yellow. And the yellow for me is good still. Like I would still, you know, if it was something I was like on the fence about, I'm like, do I wanna spend time on creating this video? If it's yellow or above, I'm probably gonna do it. Um, if it's all the way in the red, I'm probably gonna focus on a different type of keyword. So for me, if it, this was in the red and it said Second Life Gameplay, I might like level that up and say Second Life Gameplay 2020 or just get specific, like Second Life Gameplay Zeo Life, um, just so I rank higher in different searches. But also it'll show, show the number of videos and the search results. Um, you in comparison to top ranked videos. So like right now, I don't know. I don't know what this means. <laughs> Blah. But they'll also come over here and recommend other things that you could potentially rank for better. So again, like I said, Second Life Gameplay, if you're brand new, you might not rank high. And basically if you don't rank high, um, that's what I mean. If someone goes to YouTube right now to search a Second Life gameplay, they're gonna be scrolling for a while before they even come across your video. So when that happens, naturally you don't get as many views as you might want in the beginning. But if you're new, it is worth it to do some of this. So people, so you can just like start building yourself. Like when I first started on YouTube, I wasn't ranking at all for Second Life. Like there were channels that were way bigger and the Second Life channel itself that were coming up in the search results and I wasn't there. But I was like, I'm gonna create this content. So you just have to like get, YouTube used to what you're creating. Yeah, YouTube's a lot. I mean, if you want to grow, granted, if you just want to have fun and all of this isn't, you don't have to do all of this. This is just like the extra stuff. If you're really focused on growing, if you're really trying to hit milestones by a certain point in time, um, again, I would say don't like obsess about subscribe count. I think, you know, for me, that number isn't the one I'm chasing or obsessed with. I'm like, you know, it's fun ride. I, it's fun that you guys are enjoying, that I'm meeting more of you and that we're, <laughs> that we're growing together. But you know, when it comes to numbers, I'm talking about analytics. That's what I enjoy. But su su the subscriber count is kind of weird. It's it's hard to chase because you're going to set up expectations. And if you don't meet them, it's really difficult. But um, so this over here, it'll show you related searches. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, so these are things you could potentially rank for higher. So say you do want to do pregnancy videos. You could always select, you know, Second Life Gameplay Pregnant. See where you rank in comparison for that one. So for me, I, I'm at the top of competition when it comes to Second Life Pregnancy because I have a whole series on Second Life Pregnancy and I was, I think, the first person to stream anything about Second Life Pregnancy. So I'm real high. If I post a pregnancy video right now, it's gonna come to the top of the search results. Um, a lot of people aren't searching for it, so it's in the orange over here. For me, I, I would still think it's worth it just because I enjoyed it, <laughs> um, but if it's something you're not completely sold on, like you'll see, lots of people aren't searching for it. Um, it's in the orange, I mean, it's not in the red, so like some people are, so maybe you could connect with some of those people, similar interests, that'll be a great connection. Um, but, you know, have a couple that are in the green sometimes. <laughs> 
Girl, I feel you. Nothing about Second Life is easy. Um, so that's TubeBuddy. That's one of my favorite plugins to use. Again, I am so shocked that I have no tags here. I must have been like black tag. Oh, this is the one I did at 8 p.m. I was exhausted. So I would never not tag a video. So another thing that helps you grow on Second Life is C or SEO, um, which is search engine optimization. You want to use this, like <laughs> focus on it. So one, TubeBuddy will also help you out with SEO because it's telling you a lot of things. Like it'll tell you if your title's too long. Again, they recommend up to 70 characters. They'll, you know, evaluate your thumbnail to see if it's eye catching. And then they'll look at your tags. So the things that matter for SEO are your title tags and the things you actually say in the video. So if you want to rate rank for Second Life, Second Life should be in your title. Second Life should be in the first three lines of your description. Second Life should be in your tags. And you better say Second Life a lot in your first four minutes. Um... So that'll just help you rank higher for these things. So SEO actually does matter. And those are some of the ways that you can really start to rank for it. And again, you're going to have to be consistent. You're not going to see like results in two seconds, but it really helps people find you. <laughs> so focusing on SEO. Did I say that right? SEO? I keep saying CEO. What is on my TV, honey? Does the debate go off? Um... Another cool thing is TubeBuddy has tag tools, so you can copy tags from another video and drop them on here. I do that a lot, but then I'll just change up a couple to make sure they're applicable. The other tool that I really like using, as you saw, was Social Blade. So I'll pull that open really quick just so you can see it. This is so much, girl. I've learned a lot in, what has it been, 10 months? I've learned a lot. <laughs> But I've done a lot of research and we haven't even gotten to like the tech stuff. We're still on advice. I'm moving way too slow. All right. So Social Blade is another Chrome add-on. It's one, this was the first one I got. I got TubeBuddy after. I don't think you necessarily need both because TubeBuddy does the same exact thing as Social Blade. I'm just so used to Social Blade. I honestly look at this more than my analytics. Um, so this basically just does a really quick breakdown of your your channel. It's not 100% accurate because, you know, some of these sub counts are just so off base. Like if I look at my sub count here and then I look in actual YouTube analytics, I'm like, that, that ain't even close. Um, and for a while, just depending on how many subscribers you have, like at first when I started, it would show me specific subscribers. Like you got four today, you got five today. Once I got over a thousand, it stopped doing those numbers. It would only do it in groups of 10. Um, so keep that in mind. The bigger you get, like the, I feel like the less accurate this thing gets. But I like to see this because I like trends. Again, I like numbers. So it'll tell me like what my average weekly subscribe count is. Um, also daily, how many subscribers I got in a day. Like today it's saying 40 so far. Um, but what I really like is it'll give you future projections. So this is how I plan my subathons. And granted, this can change because as your weekly averages change, these numbers are going to change. But when I first started, I would look here because I was like, okay, a subathon for me makes sense if I can get to a thousand or when I'm close to a thousand. So I looked here first to see when they thought I was going to be close to a thousand. And that's when I just scheduled my subathon. And honestly, it was pretty spot on. It was close. <laughs> so that worked. Um, so that's TubeBuddy. Again, you, you can do this for YouTube. I also use it for my Instagram. I don't do much on Instagram, but you know, one day. And that is that one. Let me see. I don't think I have any other tools. That's pretty much it. Um, if you are streaming, let's talk about streaming really quick. I use Streamlabs OBS. And I, I think it's just easy for me. Um, actually, I'm not going to show you that screen. I'll show you OBS in a second. But... Streamlabs is just easier for me. So there, there are two that you can use to stream and record because you can't, I do record sometimes through OBS. I stream a lot more because I'm not a huge fan of editing. I like it when it's like when I'm in it and when it's done, but for me to start, I can't ever find the motivation to start editing. I don't know what that's about. Um, oh, thank you, Lisa. What? My chat over here is super delayed. Um, what are we talking about? Oh, Streamlabs. OBS, I don't know anything about. Um, people say it's a little better on your computer. I think Streamlabs might be a little more taxing, especially with SL. So you guys notice, 
I lag a lot when I'm streaming and if you look at my edited videos I'm not lagging because I'm not usually streaming um but yeah Streamlabs OBS do you guys want to see it can I even show it to you I don't know it's a free software there just go download it when you log in honestly it'll kind of walk you through how to use it you know maybe I'll do a video on it I don't know it's pretty self-explanatory but basically you can capture the window of whatever game it'll recognize SL as a game if it doesn't you can always configure that and it can capture a video you can do all these cool things like you can add chats you can make alert boxes um the thing that I liked is it comes with a bunch of free templates. So when I first started, I was just using different templates from Streamlabs and then I ended up creating my own. So like this box here is just a picture that I made in Photoshop and it's, I'm, let me just hide the game really quick because it's nothing special at all. Um, where is that, where is that black dragon? So it's just a picture of Mila and I put like a border around it and I put my social links. So, cause I always forget to bring them up or that they exist and you know, it's fun to have people follow you on different platforms. We'll talk about different platforms too. Good God, there's so much to talk about. How much time do we have? We still have some time. <laughs> but that's just an image that I put there. They have so many cool overlays. They have so many frames, right? You know what I'm just noticing? My head tracker is on. Girl, this whole time, oop, oop, whoa. This whole time, just a little box floating around my face. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Girl, this is why most people edit their videos so you don't see all this happening. Cause this is me, every single video I do. But oh yeah, they have a bunch of templates. They have like cool frame templates. Those are the ones I'm starting to look for now since I'm using a video, but I just like, I, I just figured out how to keep this camera on. Never mind frames, I'm not there yet. Um, oh yeah, do I? I think I do affiliate for them. I think I have affiliate code for them and my description i don't know i've lost track because i also went crazy with affiliates when i started <laughs> and then i slowed down oh my god i'm glad you thought it was on purpose so on friday i have a video with carmen and the whole time the head tracker was just the face tracker was on <laughs> um oh yeah but definitely go affiliate for second life if you're starting a second life channel there's no reason that you should continue to like recommend this platform and get nothing from it you know but more views granted we do if more people sign up but like i always think of like i, I need i need a nice partnership i don't like to just do something out of the goodness of my heart when it's taking all this time and money i've spent thousands on lighting and cameras um but yeah, go stream live for them. So I mean, affiliate for them. You can get a link from the Second Life website at the bottom, um, or you can go to cj.com. So Commission Junction is what I use. And I, honestly, that's another way to meet some other brands. So I started working with Shein and a couple other brands because they came across me through Shein and then we started connecting, or not Shein, through Commission Junction. And we started connecting and talking about other, you know, collaborations or things we could do together so definitely affiliate for second life it's it's a basic ass affiliate honestly i wish there was something that could also reward you for getting people to sign up for premium or anything you basically get like a dollar every time someone signs up um kai i don't know i can't quite tell i saw a lot of growth around the same time that I started turning on the camera, but it was a, it was slightly just a little before that. So there are co a couple of different things that are factoring into my like boom, because again, when I turned my face cam on, I had 3000 subscribers. I was getting very close to 3000. And that was, you know, four weeks ago maybe, and now I'm coming up to 7,000. But there are a lot of things. I noticed like my numbers jumping like crazy a few weeks before that happened, but I changed my content before that happened. So I started doing things where I was exposing my second life to my real life crush and exposing my second life to my real life friends and all these things where I was talking about second life in a way that I don't think people had talked about before. I think for a lot of us, we feel like second life is like our dirty secret. Um, and I think that's kind of being blown out. Like no one is thinking that anymore. Like people are getting away from that idea to be embarrassed by it. I think that episode of The Office fucked us all up and we all like low key don't like the fact that we're in second life. Um, so I found that content was really gaining traction. So the more of that I did, I was starting to get more numbers. But then of course I turned my camera on um, and I started to continue to grow. But again, 
I created a whole new series that I wasn't doing before on camera talking about things that are really relatable and relevant for Second Life players. So th there's, I do see a big difference in growth the past couple of months. And of course I did a video with Carmen. Um, Carmen has a huge following and she's bringing a lot of attention to Second Life. So I don't think this is just me, you know, benefiting from this, but she's bringing a lot of interest to Second Life and be through her, people are getting curious about Second Life. So now they're searching for things. The biggest thing that you can do right now is to help new users. Second Life is so complicated. I really want to know like why you gotta be this complicated, but it's so hard. So the more you can help new users right now is is just a good time. Um, and I think you have to look at that. You have to look at YouTube trends when it comes to what people are interested in. And right now, there's a lot of new people coming that know nothing about Second Life that need some guidance. Um, Lisa, they do not. Not that I know of. I'm telling y'all, they, they could use some marketing savvy. I don't know what they'd be doing. They just, they'll, they'll drop the email like the day of an event and ask us to come blog it. And they'd be like, no, I, I don't have time to plan for that. <laughs> exactly, Pixel. You know what? To this day, I still haven't shared my second life anything with my real life, like not on my real life Facebook, not on my real life Instagram. I recently deactivated both of them. And I'm like, they'll find me if they find me. But like, <laughs> I haven't shared with them. My mom and sisters were the only one that knew about it. Only recently when I did that video a few weeks ago did I tell my friends about it. Um, but yeah. Uh, you're trying to do what, Aisha? Am I saying your name right? I'm sorry if I'm not. All right, so we talked about, wait. <laughs> she freaked out. My mom, I think my mom just likes Second Life. Like we created an account for her and she randomly logs in. So I think, but I feel like they knew this about, like, I, it wasn't that, that, that's why it's weird that I thought I had to hide it. Because when I told people, they're like, yeah, that makes sense. Except for the people at work. Nobody at work would ever think I was interested in this. <laughs> um, all right, Kaipos, let's talk about that for a second, because... I don't enjoy, so for, you have to think about the other person. I think this is the mistake a lot of people make. This is the mistake I think Second Life creators make. This is what blows my mind about that relationship. They want you to do stuff for them, for them to profit, but they never think about what the benefit is for you. And I know people like calling me selfish all the time, but anytime I'm looking at anything, I need to know what's in it for me. Like what is the benefit for me to do this or I'm not doing it if it's nothing. Um, so when I'm thinking about collaborating with someone else, I'm like, what is the benefit for them? If I can't think of the benefit for them, I'm not even going to ask them because it's not, it doesn't feel appropriate for me. So, you know, I haven't asked that many people. I did ask Carmen and that was the first thing. It was so hard for me to like do it, but we had already been DMing each other and I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask her. And, you know, from my point of view, I was like, what could possibly be the benefit? I was like, well, she's new to this platform. I'll help her out with this platform. Um... You know, maybe there's things that she hasn't experienced yet that we could do together that would be a lot of fun. Also, I just liked her personality. So I was like, I feel like we, we'd be good together. So you have to think about the other person first <laughs> um, before approaching them for a collaboration. I also noticed no one's ever approached me in Second Life for a collaboration. And I feel like I get to that, I'm at that point now where like now if they do, I'm really gonna be thinking about it. In the beginning, I would have probably like, yeah, let's just do it. And I was that way, but now, I feel like I'm just a little more strategic about things, period. Not saying don't ask me, you know, just know that that's gonna be the back of my mind. With anything, <laughs> um, you have to think about what the benefit is for the other person. And that's usually why, that's why I don't blog, like blog or work with brands in Second Life, because I can't, I can't imagine what's in it for me. <laughs> like free stuff, Mila makes, you know, 200,000K a week, she don't need free stuff. So I don't know what the benefit is all the time. I do, if it, I think it's a cool thing that I wanna share with you guys, yes. If someone has asked me to specifically do something for a specific date, why? No, I'm gonna share what I just like. But yeah, see, that was also really fun. Um, and again, even in that situation, you know, what would be the benefit for a second life is, you know, a day in the life of an actual user. So you always, there, there's always a benefit for two people and you always have to think about that for collaborations. But also don't think about it from a place of, I just want to get subscribers from this other person because I don't know, like that, that'll be a result likely anytime, no matter how small their channel. So even like me, if I like someone's content and they only have like 50 subscribers and I like their content, I'm very likely probably going to collab with them and not think twice about it. Um, 
you know, I don't know. I don't know how to even word what I'm trying to say, but it's not always just about getting subscribers to collab with someone. It's really about creating something fun and interesting for your audience. Woo. But yeah, think about that. <laughs> what, what else do we need? So I show you streaming software. Now we know for actual editing software or recording, let's go to recording first before we talk about editing. There are a couple of different things you can do. I know nothing about Macs, so I'm so sorry if none of these options work on Macs, but there are a couple of things to do to actually record or capture your game. One, if you have Windows 10, you automatically have a game recorder. Excuse me. Um, so you automatically have a game recorder. All you have to do is hit the Windows key and G. Is that true? Wait. Windows G. The requirements, like system requirements? Girl, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. But the Second Life website does have an actual page on uh, requirements. I don't know about that. Yeah, if your channel is about collabs and stuff, that's awesome. I'm not a people person, so me just doing a bunch of collabs all the time didn't make sense for my channel. Like I like I like connecting with y'all, but having someone right next to me can be a little weird if I don't know them. <laughs> but yeah, so actual your computer comes with a game recorder, so Windows key and G to launch it and you can record. There are settings there that you can configure so you can hide your mouse. Someone asked that question earlier today is how to hide your mouse. You actually have to do it from the game recorder. So once you hit Windows key and G, just go up to the little tool icon and say hide cursor and that way your mouse won't show up. Um, another thing I notice a lot of people on YouTube do because I still see it. You're navigating your SL like this with like your camera controls button. One, that button is like triggering for some. Thank you for the subscribe, Kathy. Um, don't do that. Use your actual camera controls. I have a whole video on camera controls, but basically alt in your mouse are your friend, alt control your mouse. Just move around this way. It's just easier to follow when you're watching something versus like this. This is tough. Um, Yeah, exactly, Amaya. Oh, Lisa, yeah, practice with the camera, honey. Especially for outfit videos, because a lot of those, you're moving a lot and you're zooming in on things. Um, so I have a whole video, I think my other video on how to create a series on YouTube or how to create a channel goes into very specific details about your cam controls, about your lighting, all of those type of things. So go check that out for sure. But in terms of recording, Windows G, or if you have a gaming laptop or a gaming computer, the NVIDIA experience, which you actually have to download from their website. So I've had my computer for a year and I never even knew this existed. Hey, Naomi. So I've been using this for, so for my videos for next week, not this week, because I didn't learn about it until this last week. Um, I've been using the NVIDIA recorder and the really cool thing about that is it doesn't impact my second life at all. So using the actual Windows recorder does lag me out a little bit in world, but the NVIDIA one, nothing. Like I could turn that on right now. She's not gonna lag at all. It doesn't impact my performance at all. The videos come out so much better. You can also record in 4K resolution. So they just look better. Like you, you guys are gonna see the difference. Next week when I upload my video, I think it's gonna be next Thursday or the following week. That video looks significantly different than anything I've ever done on this channel. Yes, the DeForest experience. <laughs> Um, so that's how you record. Usually what happens is once you finish recording, it'll just save to a file on your computer that you can have. I recommend getting an external because especially if you use the GeForce experience, that is a massive file. So if you have a bunch of those on your computer, you're, it's going to just start impacting how you experience Second Life and of course, you know, your video and streaming quality. Um, and then I use Filmora to edit. So Filmora is convenient for me. I mean, granted, I'm starting to look in a Final Cut and all these other things. I don't like editing, so like, I'm trying to keep it as easy as possible. But I've used Filmora for years, actually, and it's because you get a lifetime license. So I think the lifetime license was like 49 bucks when I signed up. I think it was because it was around Black Friday. I think it's like 60 or 70 bucks right now. They're going to have a sale. I also have links for Filmora in the description below. I've been affiliating for them forever i think even before i had this youtube channel from another place um yeah and update your drivers i didn't even know i had to update a driver until last week so i updated my driver who knew but filmora is awesome i can um i can show you my window really quick i think i'm not a fan of editing this is why i live stream so that's another thing so we talked about like why you absolutely need to niche down even within your niche um 
another thing is figure out are you an editor or are you a live streamer are you a long video person or are you short video person it doesn't matter don't look at other channels and try to copy what they're doing do what makes sense for you and your audience so like right now i have a bunch of people that like videos that are hours long so you know it wouldn't make sense for me to look at someone else with a 15 minute video and like 4,000 views on it and think oh i should do that too that's not gonna make sense for me you have to do what makes sense for you and like slowly as you evolve through this different phase you know things will change like you know my video coming out tomorrow is 15 minutes and it was so easy to edit i can't i cannot talk about how easy this was to edit <laughs> but i'm gonna be doing a lot of videos like that because it's easy for me so um iMovie I don't like because it doesn't have as many features as Filmora. Filmora, Filmora also has a bunch of templates. So I'm gonna, how do I show you this? Hold on, window capture. I'm gonna add it really quick so we can look all up in to Filmora. Um, is it you? Is that the right thing? Oh, ciao. I got business in the streets. That is not the right one. Hold on. <laughs> Delete. That's also another thing about being live. If you're a perfectionist, it's tricky because you're gonna make mistakes live. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm like, I don't care. Y'all will survive them, I promise. That's not the one either. Where is my, mm, I'll make some work. I forgot that I have to set it up first. All right, fine. I'll show you the website. Do I not have an old one? Didn't we do Filmora before? Damn, son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go to Fiverr. They have lots of editors. For me, I feel like I just know the... I feel like you just have to know my personality a little bit to know what I would want to keep in a video because there are some things that I clearly should cut out of videos and I leave them in because I'm like, that's just me. So just just be able to like really articulate what you want. I'm so mad that wouldn't show up. Why? Wait, can I do a whole display? Let's see. Let's just do this one. Woohoo. Hold on, we're in the matrix. Wait, I'm gonna hide that real quick. I mean, honestly, it's not all that bad either. Like I've come across, just depending on how long it is, I've come across really affordable, like 20 bucks, get a video edited. It could be worth it. All right. I use Fiverr for some things. Like I used it for, you know, the, what is that? The, the banner on my channel? Granted, I don't feel like it's very me though. Why won't it show? Oh, you're on this one. Y'all see this? Okay, Filmora. Now I've lost my chat. Hold on. All right. <laughs> so I like Filmora again because you have a bunch of templates. So let me see. I'm afraid of y'all seeing all up in my business though. Let me move this over here. Also, rename your, if you're gonna stream live, rename your computer. That was that was my problem in the beginning. When I first started streaming live, every time I would open up like a file dialogue or like take a snapshot, it showed my government name. It was like save to, and it said my full name computer. And I'm like, you son of a gun. Um, I'm just gonna throw a random video on here. Oh, I'm gonna have pictures of my face. Why? Oh, uh, no, oh wait, here's one. Oh, it's like a two second video though. What just happened? What happened to the screen? Yeah, so easy. Um, I did recently, so you don't have to like buy a subscription or anything. It's a, like a lifetime license, so you can have it for free. You can also download the free version. Well, not for free, but you can download the free version. This one is free, but you'll have a watermark as the export, but the free version gives you time to really explore and learn the program. Um, so easy. So all you have to do is like add it here, and then you have a bunch of these different options. Excuse me. 
but you can have all these cool titles that you can add. They have all types of effects. They have sound effects. They have copyright free music. Although one of my really old videos just got a copyright strike on a song that I used in Filmora. So I don't know, but usually it's copyright free. I don't know how that changed. Um, but there's a lot of really cool things. You could like double click them in preview to see what they look like. Um, I purchased the subscription plan, which is only like 50 bucks for three months. And that gives me just access to a lot more. So some of these like crazy things, like if I want to feel like a whole like machinima filmmaker or whatever, I can get real crazy. Um, Lisa, I don't know. Um, cause I don't need people showing up in my house. <laughs> I've already been stalked. If you missed my story time on the man who showed up in my apartment, go watch it. People are dangerous. Uh, and it's very easy to find a whole lot of information with just your name. I suggest you Google your name and see how much actually comes up a lot. I don't even use my real name on my real life social network. I've never used my real name. But yeah, you have all these really cool things. Um, even like these little title packs, I think are so cute. I think I use this on, I use this one on that video I did with Carmen. Um, they also have like the YouTube ones. I don't know where they are, but you also have like different elements that you can add. You can add emojis to things. Like it's just a very user-friendly, super easy thing that you can do. Oh, the little subscribe thing I'm always throwing on videos. Um, and this is without like having to look around for these things because you know, you can find all these things on the internet somewhere I don't know where but I don't feel like doing all that and when it comes to actually editing the video um, For me, I'm always looking at like sound moments so you can see on the bottom where your like voice is so I usually always cut out dead air I cut out ums a lot um, Like that one I would cut that out <laughs> and it's so easy you just snip it and then you delete it and boom you can preview as you go along. It's super easy. It's just so easy to use. They have a bunch of effects too. For me, I like things simple. I don't like a lot of effects. I don't like a lot of noise, but you know, it's fun to play with. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend using your real name. <laughs> you, you will underestimate the hate you build just for being yourself. Um, I get a lot of hate on YouTube. I get shade thrown all the time. People just don't understand that. I don't care. We could talk about that in a minute too. Cause like, that was something I was nervous of. I was like, what am I gonna do with like Second Life troll? I mean, YouTube trolls. YouTube trolls don't have shit on Second Life haters though. So I felt thoroughly prepared. Yeah, I wouldn't be a fan. I mean, granted, you know, if it happens, it happens. Just, I don't. Girl, you can't do that in the age of the internet. I feel like you haven't watched enough ID documentaries. Watch the ID documentary. It's on Hulu about like digital media and digital life. Um, you might you might change <laughs> might change how much you put out there and how easy it is. Also, I work in technology. Um, I don't do securities in technology, but I work with the securities teams. And some of these people, they know how to find a lot of information with very little. And just think of how many of these tech savvy people are in Second Life or just chilling out on YouTube. If they want to find you, they're going to find you. And yes, they will show up at your door because it has happened to me. Girl, you about to put yourself on YouTube. Yeah, you will be. All right, so we've talked about streaming. Streaming is easy. I use Streamlabs OBS. You can also record with Streamlabs OBS. For me, that is a little more taxing on Second Life. Um, the Windows Recorder is also an option. The G, the GeForce, what is it? NVIDIA thing is an option. And then editing with Filmora. I have links for all of these things down below. Other thing you want to keep in mind, because I didn't used to really care about it when I first was like just throwing up monarchy videos, um, was music. I would put up, you know, whatever I liked. I figure people just want to listen to music that they know. Do not include copyright music in anything because by the time you get to a thousand, all your old videos, are now paying somebody else because it has their music in it. And also it's just like those videos don't rank as high and like there's just no benefit for you. So use copyright free music. YouTube does have its own library of music. Um, I think the problem with a lot of copyright free music is just not good. But if you guys notice all the music I use in my videos, I like some of these are my favorite songs now. Like my intro video song is my favorite song. Um, 
So I use Epidemic. Epidemic is great. I also get a free month when you sign up for Epidemic. So go grab the link below. Um, I'm, I'm, that's another brand that I just started talking to. So, you know, yeah, email address. No. Oh, let's talk about email address real quick. So do not use any email address that you publish on your YouTube channel. And I forgot who it was who got their like YouTube channel hacked for a while. Don't, so the contact email address that you use on your YouTube channel, that can't be your YouTube email. So like my Gmail account that I actually log into my YouTube, I've never published anywhere. No one's, I've never given it to anyone. No one has it. It's just like this random email address that is a random bunch of random letters and numbers. My password, I just like hit the keyboard and made up a password. Um, don't, don't use the same. You gave someone your IP address, girl. What are you talking about? That is what, that is what, that's like your social security number online. Don't give that out. Uh, and be careful of like websites too. So another thing is like, I, I, I don't know. If you're a domain owner or if you own your website server, sorry to tell you, I own a lot of mine. I'm not sitting here fishing for y'all IPs, but they can see it. So if someone in world just gives you their website to go check out, just know they can also see your IP address. Granted, I don't think I've ever like said, here, take this, you know, website and look at it right now. <sighs> Cause I don't need to, but if someone was trying to get all up in your business and they just give you a website that might be a legit website, just know they can still see your IP. Um, we don't wanna make you nervous. We just want you to be real careful. <laughs> But yeah, email address, don't, oh wait, th no, th her situation was something weird, but the one where you have just email, you have to be really specific about your email. Don't share the one that you're using to log in. Um, so like my Mila, milavanderbilt.com, I can't log in anything with that, so. What, Mr. Bubbles? I thought that was your name, I feel so deceived. Uh, what else can we talk about really quick? Um, I don't know, maybe hate? Cause I think that was another thing I was nervous about before I got started. YouTube opens you up to a different can of worms. And I think you have to be prepared at different levels of your YouTube journey. So I still say that I'm a small channel. I am a small beginner channel. I am so, I'm in the beginning of my YouTube journey. And I, it's at the point where a lot of people who watch my channel are here because we have a connection. So I don't get that much hate. I don't get more hate on YouTube than I do in Second Life. I honestly get a lot more hate on Second Life than on YouTube and like, I don't care, but um, it's, it's very hard to not like let the hate stick. Like, you know, you out of you can get a thousand comments on something and you're gonna remember the one comment that was bullshit. And like, it's just hard not to do that. It's like human nature. Um, yeah, you can, you can secure your website stuff. Sorry. Um, but yeah, what were we talking about? Oh, hey, yeah, so I get a couple of that. I mean, if you look at some of my old videos, I, I'd leave the comments there. That's another thing. The more comments you have on a video, the higher it ranks. So back to all that SEO stuff we were talking about, videos with more comments do better. They perform better. So I don't delete my hate. Oh, Kai, no. All of my videos are marked no for children. I show Mila's ass and like her nipples on the verge of slipping out. Like, we are not for kids. I don't want, I want kids watching my channel. I'm gonna swear whatever um for monetization reasons keep all that like later on in the video but yeah no i'm no for children and i typically bleep out swears and stuff like that within the first five minutes and i'm also not all that excessive with it but no honey girl that's your real name <laughs> i would have never known what are you talking what are you doing um, so, but in terms of tech stuff, <laughs> I'm going to actually link, oh, also, what, there's so much to talk about. We don't have the time. I'm sorry. We're already an hour 15 in, but in terms of gear. So when I first started, I was using this for my webcam. Um, when I first went on camera, you guys know camera is super new to me. This is something I'm experimenting with. We'll also talk about audio because I know that's something I struggle with, but this is what I was shooting with for using as my webcam when I first started. So this is a DSLR. This is a Nikon D3300. This is awesome for pictures. It sucks as a webcam. So although my million dollar DSLR that I've never used, 
was brand well not brand new i've had it for a while i've just never used it it just doesn't work as a webcam so if you are going to use a dslr which i do kind of recommend because y'all see this quality um you're going to need something called you're going to need something to turn into a webcam dslrs are not meant to be webcams this one wasn't useful for me because this shuts off every 10 minutes granted you guys know my canon does shut off every 30 minutes so that's why i have to like keep looking back and hitting it let's just hit it right now but um Thank you, Akia. But this shuts off every 10 minutes. That got super annoying for me because when this shut off, it also crashed my OBS. So that means the whole stream would freeze for a minute and sometimes go offline. So I've replaced that now with a Canon EOS M50, which is an older camera, but it had raving reviews. And honestly, I do like the quality. Granted, it's kind of like a starter camera. I only got the basic lens. It comes with a few different lenses. Um, the really thing that, the thing that was kind of important for me, I wanted to be able to blur my background and I've only just figured out how to do that on this camera. Um, so I recommend, but you do need an Elgato cam link and basically that hooks up to your camera's HDMI and you plug it into a USB in your computer and your computer then recognizes your DSLR as a webcam. Other options, I do have this like Logitech webcam. It's, um, it shoots HD, it shoots in 1080p. And I used this for a couple of videos. I don't think you guys could tell the difference. So this was just as fine as my Nikon. So just finding an HD webcam totally works and you don't have to buy extra stuff because the Elgato cam link, I think that was 200 bucks. You know, my Nikon was like 960. Thankfully, I make money in Second Life. So Second Life has paid for all of this. But the cam link, this one I think turned out to be like 800 bucks because it's discontinued and sold out everywhere. But... It's crazy. Yeah, I just don't share information. I feel like I had a safety video before. I talk about nothing and I lie about things. Like if people are like, where you from? If they keep pressing me for it after I've said no, like I'm either just gonna ignore you or I'm gonna be like, you know what? I'm from Gloria. That was the name of my first sim. And I would tell people that. <laughs> right, none of their business because you'll, I'm not gonna say everyone does this, but I knew someone who did this and someone who got found out for doing it. They asked different questions at different points in their relationship to use them to identify you. Um, I don't know why he was like this. A lot of people, a lot of people know this character because he really cozied up. He pretends to be your friend, but he's honestly just trying to get information from you. And when you meet people that are very strategic and like really doing it on purpose, you get very paranoid. So yeah, I might be paranoid, but like I ain't playing. Um <laughs> Yeah, tell nothing. I didn't even used to tell what city I was in until recently. But a couple things you'll never see me do. You'll never see me shoot out my window. I was watching a YouTube video of a girl the other day. Um, she was doing an apartment tour of her building, but then she went to her balcony and was shooting outside of it. And guess what was in the ad for that video? Her specific apartment building because I'm in her neighborhood. Like, I don't think she was thinking of people close by. They're now... Like, YouTube doesn't know. You don't want people to know that information. They're just like, oh, same neighborhood. Here's the ad for this person who's right next to you. So if I was good and damn crazy, I'd bounce over. And this was someone who had a million subscribers. So I'm like, girl, that's a lot of people knowing exactly where you live now. So I, I hit her up about it. Um, I didn't look back to see if she edited the video, but that was crazy. Um, questions. Ask me questions because I'm going to end this very soon. I think, you know, there's a lot more to talk about. We talked about so much. Um, lighting, I'm going to link all the lights that I use. I'm basically, I got a shitload of lighting. I'm gonna have to take a picture of this for y'all. Can I just take a picture now? What can I do? <laughs> can I just show you <laughs> why I'm sitting in front of? Cause it's ridiculous. Um, but for me, you know, there's, I think there's just like general gaming lighting that a lot of people use, but me, you know, I'm a little extra. I wanted to feel like I had beauty lighting. Let me. That is super, my camera is dirty. Um, SL is banned on Twitch. Do you say Twitch? Did I lose that? Oh yeah, yeah, SL is banned on Twitch. Last time I spoke to someone from Linda Labs, they said they were gonna work on it, but they haven't worked on it. Um, Mousy, I talked a lot about that. It's very hard to tell because a lot of my, con I don't wanna repeat it run track back but this is what i'm sitting in front of y'all can't see this 
There's a ring light in front of me. There are two LED lights right here that are attached to my monitors. There are two soft boxes right next to me. I'm like, just for shits and giggles, I have these two umbrellas. They're not on right now, but it feels very legit. Like, I feel like I'm in a studio. Um, <laughs> how long for live streams? You're going to, um, that's gonna depend on you. Like for me, I just started live streaming and I, I just, I had to see what was average for me. So, you know, I didn't feel like I had to push it. At the end of the day, you want to end your content when you're done. Um, the longer you try to like prolong it or stretch it out, then that's not your length. If you feel like you can't get something done in a certain amount of time, that's also not your length, then you need to be longer. So it's like, honestly, for me, an hour is average before I start losing my voice. So like right now it's getting in there. So that's why I'm like, we gotta wrap it up because I'm seeing we're coming out an hour and a half. I'm do I'm looking at that like for time reasons, but also just knowing what my body's gonna do at an hour and a half after talking this fast and this kind of like loud. Cause another thing you'll notice with me, I get a lot of energy when I'm streaming. It's just like pure adrenaline. I don't know where it comes from. I get real loud, but it, it impacts my voice. Oh my God, I just found the Elgato key lights. Now I want those. Oh, okay. Do I have, um, yeah, if you're not actually like showing the game, cause I know there's a lot of SL creators who make furniture and stuff that are on Twitch. It's not a problem. And it's also not a problem until someone reports you and then you lose everything. So for me, it wasn't worth it to even stay on. Cause I got haters. Um, do you have to have Facebook discord and stuff Flickr to grow a YouTube channel? Absolutely not. I think go with the platform you perform best on. For me, I always say this, I have a Facebook account. Honestly, it's kind of, um, oh, I don't know how Lil Simsy, Lil Simsy is like one of my, honestly, she's one of my favorite YouTubers, which is funny because she's such a like sweet, little young, innocent girl, but she's about legit. I think I was watching her, I was like watching her so much before I started my channel and I was like, now I wanna create a channel because like I was loving what she was doing. So she might have been the inspiration for me starting my channel. Um, but I don't know how she does it. We'll talk about that in a second. Let me um, get back to different social networks. No, I don't think it's necessary. And I think, I don't know. I've grown on YouTube faster than I've grown on any other network. So Instagram wasn't really something that I was having fun with until I started sharing real life content. For me, Instagram always felt like I wanted like people to get to know me and I couldn't do that with just my avatar. So like I wasn't posting regularly. I never posted to stories. I didn't care much about it. I don't think I follow like 20 people on Instagram. Like I'm not engaged with Instagram at all. That's changing a little bit more now that I'm sharing real life content. And I think that's more fun. Like I, I could take y'all, like y'all baked gummy bears with me. Well, not baked. We made keto gummy bears and I show you my haul videos and all my stuff with Shein. And I think it's beneficial, especially when you start working with brands because you're gonna be getting stuff and it's fun. Um, but if you want like your viewers to get to know the real you in, in a controlled way, that's not your full name, Aisha. <laughs> then Instagram is great. Facebook has never been for me. Facebook is honestly where I'm like dropping my second life memories. And honestly, lately, that's just as memories come up, that's just giving me inspiration for some of those weekend videos where I'm just talking about second life stuff. So it, it keeps me in touch with second life, but I don't engage much there. You know, I've never cared about like likes on pictures. Like if I like a picture, I, I really, that's all I care about. Um, but I get no engagement on Facebook. Also, my actual Facebook page, I don't post on that that often or that consistently. So I don't think you need any of those. I grow faster on YouTube. Once you get over a thousand, you have your community tab. I'm, I want my stories. <laughs> That's what I thought I was gonna get at a thousand, but no. So once I get to 10,000, we really gonna have some fun. Um, I'm, 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 What were we talking about that I was like, I'm gonna come back to that, wait. Was it stream time? I'm getting real oily. I didn't bring a... And I bring a powder. Um, so Lisa, did I strategize about how to cross over to a variety of demographics? For me, it was very organic. So I don't know. I just talk about what I want to talk about. And I think, I think YouTube's made me comfortable talking about things that I've just never thought to talk about with people. We talked about mental health, which I didn't necessarily feel was taboo, but it was a lot more information than I would give. I talk about the black experience a lot because I'm black and I've always felt this weird, 
this weird relationship with my blackness when it comes to liking things that aren't stereotypically black. And I was like, I had that experience. I think other people are having that experience. I can talk about it. Um, so I didn't really think about like how to cross over. I think, you know, I, I try to be as conscious as possible that and I, you, I see it. So when I talk about my black experience and videos, I see that I get less subscribers. And for me, they weren't the subscribers for me. Like, I don't, I don't care about that because that means my channel wasn't for them if they have a problem with it. So I wasn't, I didn't think in that kind of way. I think they're, the human experience is relatable, no matter like what race or, you know, sexuality or anything that you are. And I think, you know, I just wanted to share what I've been learning over my years and what my interests are and all of that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm old too. I think that's another thing that I thought about because um, I like I like sim stuff or video. I watch more Sims YouTube channels than anything, to be honest. And everyone is like 22 years old. I'm 32, honey. Well, I will be soon, so. You know how it is. You're on MySpace still. MySpace is still around? Girl. Or mister. <laughs> um, oh, I'm never getting on IMVU. IMVU has a huge audience. So if you do want a little boost, um, IMVU. But remember, so that's another thing. So subathons, giveaways, and hopping over to IMVU for a second, you get a boost in subscribers and views. And then next week they go down. When you see that dip, YouTube analytics doesn't like it. So you're not going to trend as fast or as high as you used to. So don't do too many like boost things often. Be strategic. Don't do a giveaway every five seconds. Don't do a subathon every five seconds because you're just going to boost your number for a second. And then comparatively, the next week it's going to go low and YouTube's going to recognize it going low and it's going to go even lower. So just like think things like that and you'll be fine. Hey, legit lovely. So honestly, that I play the most Dead by Daylight, which is a horror game. And then what is it? Truck Simulator? I don't know why I've been playing that game so much, but I'm playing Truck Simulator a lot, and I've been recording it. I don't know why, because I sure as hell never put it on here. And I don't know if it's interesting enough. Well, maybe, because I really trash talk. Girl, here for it. I feel like I've seen what you look like, and like, now I'm confused if it was you or not, because this whole time I was thinking I knew what you look like, but you don't look like you have grandkids. Unless you just, you know. Um, girl, Tori, I gotta go back and look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so happy you brought this up. <laughs> so my first videos were a struggle because you're talking to yourself, right? I think... I gotta look. I gotta see what my first stream was, but I remember... I don't know. Find a friend. So my first live stream ever, I think, was me either BU cooking or me doing like a second life workout and I was like right you joined me and I'm recording this and you're gonna be on voice so like deal with it honey <laughs> I needed a friend because it was very hard for me to talk to myself um especially because I just get awkward like I told y'all y'all give me life when I get on here and I'm like talking to you guys I have a lot of energy when it's just like me all by myself like it took me a while to film those videos in front of the camera just filming them, no audience. I've gotten very used to it and very comfortable. Granted, I feel like I'm always gonna be growing in terms of talking to a camera, but find a friend. <laughs> if you don't have a friend, just like find something to talk about other than what you're doing. So this is what I've had to do for the videos on Fridays where I'm doing my makeup. Like makeup is what I'm doing, but I need something to talk about because I would run out of stuff to talk about if I were doing makeup. So say you're like doing a drive in Second Life and that's gonna be your li your first live stream ever and you know that no one's gonna show up. Some people might, because honestly Second Life is trending a little higher, so people will probably pop in. But um, think about something to talk about beyond just what you're doing. That way, you know, you'll talk, greet people in your chat try to stay engaged with your chat but you know sometimes you can't <laughs> all right did i guess everything this is a long one we went to a whole hour and a half there's some stuff i didn't cover one day <laughs> um also, background is a thing for me. I, I have started doing my makeup right here because 
I don't know. I took everything out of my vanity. I'm like, we're bringing it into the office. So it's, it's a mess. But if you are going on camera, your background is kind of important. I also have a green screen, but I feel like I like this vibe a little better. Um, so I don't always plug the green screen. Virtual families. Yeah. But thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have more like YouTube questions, ask in comments. If if I see like enough, I might do like a second part of this because there's so much I'm thinking of now that I haven't even brought up, um, especially when it comes to growing. Someone asked me something about 7,000 and I forgot to answer. But yeah, it's very, it's exciting to grow again. I feel like very much a beginner, very much still learning a lot of things. Uh, don't stop learning. But you guys, I hope to see a whole bunch of channels pop up. If you are in Discord, be sure to pop them into the channel for vloggers and all of that so I can check them out and subscribe and, you know, do all that fun stuff. But if you guys did like this video, slap. Why can't I ever get these out? Thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Pour five more. And, of course, drop comments if you need help with anything else. But you guys enjoy the rest of your night. I have a video coming out for you tomorrow. And I have a video coming out Friday with Carmen. So you'll see that. So bye. We have no music like to lead you out, but um, it's coming. It's almost in screen. In screen is coming up.